This podcast is not meant to be professional advice of any kind. It is meant to be informative and entertaining. If you make any changes to your life, see the appropriate professional before you do so. Welcome to Super Age. My name is David Stewart. I am the founder of Ageist and your host on the Super Age show. We talk about how to live healthier, how to live longer, and how to be happier. And who doesn't want that? Today's show is brought to you by Inside Tracker, the dashboard to your inner health. Go to insidetracker.com slash ages, save 20% on all their products. This show is also brought to you by Element, L-M-N-T, my favorite electrolyte mix. It's what I put in my water in the morning, and it's what I put in my water at the gym. Go to drinkelement.com slash ages and receive a free eight-serving sample pack with any purchase. Today's show is also brought to you by Timeline Nutrition with their breakthrough product, MitoPure, the first clinically tested urolithin A supplement, which is showing tremendous results for mitochondrial health. Go to TimelineNutrition.com slash Ageist, use the code Ageist at checkout, and save 10% off your first order of MitoPure. Welcome to episode 126 of the Super Age Show. It is great to have you with us. This will be dropping on March 22nd, 2023. This week on the show, we're going to be talking about the future with somebody who knows a lot about the future. That is Faith Popcorn. Faith has been around, I think, since the late 70s, early 80s, talking about what the future is going to be like. And she has a really good track record on that. And she has some, you know, pretty amazing ideas about age and the future and where we're going. Um, So we're going to get to Faith in just a moment. But what's on my mind this week is I've had a couple really interesting conversations. Um, We had an event last week. Thank you, everybody who came. It was great to meet you all. It was really fun Um, here in Park City. And at the event, um, our friends Adina Starr and Lang presented um, a new ski boot. Okay, so what's great about a ski boot? Well, the thing is there have been all these technological innovations out there in sporting equipment. So, you know, things like mountain bikes, like a mountain bike today is a really technically advanced thing that allows people to do things that they never could have done, you know, on a mountain bike of 30 years ago or so. Same thing with golf clubs and shoes and all this stuff. And um, Lang is now producing a ski boot that has a lot of technical innovation that helps people ski at a much higher level with a lot less effort. So why am I bringing this up? Um, what's interesting is, for instance, the people in my master's ski racing group. Well, there's, there's my friend John. John's turning 79. John's a really good skier. And, you know, like all of us, um, there is just no way on earth with the equipment that I grew up with that any of us would be skiing anywhere like this. Like, I'm skiing better, faster, having more fun than I have in my life. And I'm 64. That just shouldn't that that just wouldn't be happening without the kind of equipment that we have today. So I I think that this is it's really interesting. I mean, there's a lot of why people our age are able to do this kind of stuff at what used to be considered a rather advanced age is that we take better care of ourselves, right? We eat better, we know how to exercise, we're you know keeping track of our blood values, all this sort of stuff. Um, But additionally, a big part of this is the gear. Um, And I, you know, I don't like to go too deep down the rabbit hole with like gear, but I mean, it's a big part of it. And if you, you know, just think about if you buy a car today, the difference in that car and a car that you may have bought in 1975, it's gigantic, right? Um, And sort of the same thing has happened with all this other stuff that helps us have fun and we can have fun for much longer. And I, I think that that's really an interesting thing. And I think we're going to be seeing more and more of that as more and more people get a little older. These people are going to want to continue doing the things that they'd like to do for fun. And there's going to be more and more demand for this kind of technical innovation. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I know who are, you know, in their 60s and 70s and are telling me they're playing golf at a higher level than they ever have in their lives. And it's why? Because of the kind of golf ball and the kind of golf club. And, you know, if you're into golf, it's a good time. (laughs) Um, So we're going to get to faith in just a second after a quick word from our sponsors. 
The first sponsor of today's show is Timeline Nutrition with their breakthrough product, MitoPure. We all know how important mitochondrial energy is, and especially maintaining muscle and strength as we age. Urolithin A, which is found in MitoPure, has been clinically proven to increase muscle strength and endurance with no other changes in lifestyle. Urolithin A is essentially upgrading your body's cellular power grid, giving your body the energy it needs to optimize. I've been using MitoPure for a few months now, and what I can tell you is there is a noticeable change in the way my muscles re-energize after I use them. What that means is, say I'm involved in some intense activity in the gym or maybe some sporting activity. Normally, the next time I did it, my I would be you know kind of tired. I, I would be sort of gassed out. That doesn't seem to happen with this. Um, and all I can imagine is because my mitochondrial grid has essentially been upgraded. It's not just my muscles that are getting upgraded. It's all the other cells in my body because they're all powered by mitochondria. Go to TimelineNutrition.com slash Ageist. Use the code Ageist at checkout and save 10% off your first order of MitoPure. The second sponsor of today's show is Element, spelled L-M-N-T. Element is an electrolyte drink that contains the exact ratios of the electrolytes sodium, magnesium, and potassium to optimize our cellular functioning for mental and physical performance. Most of us understand that, you know, we need to stay hydrated. But what a lot of people don't realize is just pounding water isn't going to cut it. In order for our cells to function properly, they need sodium, potassium, and magnesium in the right doses. Element has perfected the balance. Now, of course, people with prehypertension or hypertension need to be careful about their sodium intake. But for most of us who are mindful about eating clean, unprocessed food most of the time, we may not be getting enough sodium, potassium, or magnesium. That's why I drink a packet of Element each day. If you'd like to try Element, go to drinkelement.com slash ageist, that's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash ageist, and receive a free eight-serving sample pack with any purchase. Let me know what your favorite flavor is. I'm, I'm into citrus salt. What's yours? we got Faith Popcorn coming right up. Um, remember, after my conversation with Faith, we've got that fun thing we do called Just Try This. So stay tuned after my chat with Faith, and we'll give you a little tidbit, which may improve your life a little happier, a little healthier. Hey, Faith, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Happy Monday, if I can say that. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Yeah. I mean, what's not to like? Um, we're all still here, so it's a good yeah, day. Exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, where where are you? Are you in the East Village? I'm in New York, New York, New York for six generations. And I was you, I was raised in the East Village. And are you still in the East Village? I'm no, I'm on 64th at, and between Park and Madison. Oh, fancy neighborhood. Yeah, I moved up. <laughs> but my roots are in the East Village. Really? really? Yeah. Uh so I'm you're more interested in the future than I am. I'm interested in the future, but you're really interested in the future. So I wanted to have a conversation with you about age and the future. Um, and I think that there's there's like a range of places, you know, we're talking about increasing health spans, lifespans, possibly very long, you know. Right. Spans. And, then, and then you can sort of go into the next level, which is, um, uploading into uploading your consciousness into something that's non-biological. Yeah. Uh, so talk to me about age in the future. What are you seeing out there? Well, you know, age in the future is going to take an entirely different mm, view because we're looking right now at the end of death so the end of death is about uploading your consciousness into like a computer. So anything before that is about age, you know, and we're seeing like a lot of people interested, like uh, Sergey Young wrote this mm -hmm. book about living to 200. And mm -hmm. um, so I think, I think that age in the future is going to the, the issue will be, how can I live healthily? into the future. I think people go, but also we haven't actually answered some of the questions like, are you going to still stay married to the same person for like 130 years? I mean, really, I, unlikely. 
I think. Are you going to still have the same occupation? Will you have your dream occupation? Will you run out of money? Will you have a new set of children because people won't have to be pregnant in the future to have babies, um, et cetera, et cetera, and on and on. So a lot of things, a lot of perspective changes. And how do you see this? Uh, like the culture right now is very, like youth culture has been very important for the last, I want to say like 60 years or so, 70 years. Um, do you see the the overall culture changing like is that if if we're looking at people a large cohort of people living over i'll just say over a hundred how does that change the culture in terms of what those people are uh, you know whatever they're consuming is what's going to be getting made right yeah well here's the thing we're going to be singularity eyes so we're going to be part robotic right um we are going to be uploaded in terms of our brain i'm not i'm saying before we're uploading to computer you know we're going to have like little handy uploads if we can afford them then you're going to ask about the haves and the have nots which is you know but we're going to have brain implants we're going to have spine implants we're going to, we have knee implants already um we're going to have robotic companions which will be very satisfying in every way. So it the next, let's say you're 50 now, the next, they say if you're 50 now, you're going to live to 120. I don't know. Yeah. Let's say that those years, those 70 years are going to maybe look a little bit different than what you, the last 50 looked. And... You said you said there's a lot of interesting things we can dive into here <laughs> uh, that you just said. Uh, let's um, let's go to the robotic companion. Um, okay. I think of Clara and the Sun. Yeah, loved uh, which, it. Loved that book. Uh, one of the best books I've read in a long time. Yeah. Um, I can send you a thing now. Disney just re- released a robotic little robotic companion. Oh. On the on the on the on the um, on the like fashion weeks. Models are walking with robotic dogs. Mm-hmm. They're telling dog food companies, be careful because people are going to have dogs in the metaverse. They may not want real dogs. You know, they're going to have dogs in the metaverse and they're going to have dogs, you know, robotic dogs, and they're going to be very responsive and fabulous, but you won't have to walk them or feed them. That's a threat to an industry. And um, things... You know, when you when you blurt it out like this, you just want to hang up. I hope you don't hang up on me because it's just too much. I mean, you go like, oh, my God, how can I do? But it is going to come drip, 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 but it's coming. And it has come. It's just, what do they say? The future is here. It's not just not evenly distributed, which is true about uploads and implants. And the other thing is we're like not going to see it like I just said it. It's going to be like a little bit like more seductive, a little bit slower. But what I just said is absolutely going to happen. Let's, um, I, I, I want to press you a little bit on the the cultural changes that'll happen. That culture now, like, like I said, it's very, even now it's very youth oriented. Mm-hmm. And then do we see with these longer, you know, like you said, okay, you're 50, you're going to be alive for another 70 years. Do you, do people ch- like change, um, you know, the, 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 are they consuming product in a different way? Are they consuming entertainment in a different way? And therefore the, the people generating this content are going to, you know, skew older. Does that make sense? Well, I do think that things are going to skew older because you'll have more older people living longer with money Mm -hmm. so that the, the audience, you know, the, like the, the culture is going to demand, give me stuff. I think that entertainment is going to be very, very important. And I know it's like adorable that we go to a movie theater, but we can probably watch something on a lens that's in our eye we're going to be able to go to the metaverse with a lens in our eye 
many companies are working on this already because that thing is so klutzy, that big thing, right? Oculus. Yeah, Oculus. Yeah. And then, you know, eyesight, 2020, no, I want 2100, you know, and I want to be able to look at something and see its history right away or look at you and know what diseases you've had, what your IQ is, you know, are you married? Just bang, your whole history is like printed up in the air there in a hologram. We're going to, we're going to like travel by hologram and avatars having several, uh, you know, you want to say forms in which to express ourselves. That's what avatars just form. And an avatar will be able to maybe take your kids to school and one will be doing the work and one will be like maybe going to the, you know, beauty salon or whatever. Like this multiple life. That's why I love that title, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Because if you start thinking like this, everything, because people go, this or that. And I say, no, everything. Where? In the metaverse or here? Everywhere. All at once. Is it going to be linear? I'll go here all at once. So one eye could be looking that way and one eye can be looking that way. It's hard to comprehend. But if you look at us 25 years ago, you didn't think you're going to have a screen in your face. Like, you know, people are falling down the stairs regularly. I say to my kids, please, when you walk down the stairs, you know, put that screen down. But, and people that think, oh, I'm going to limit screen time. This is not happening. You know, it's going to be a chip. You're going to be able to turn it on. Your phone is in your finger. Your keys are in your finger. Your biography is in your finger. Your medical history, your everything, you chipped up. And that's how it's going. So I think called, also color, ethnicity. And I, we've been talking about this to a lot of derision. Are you picking up my bell? No. Okay, good. Um, so we've been pick, we're talking about this to through a lot, you know, to a lot of derision that there's going to be one color. I mean, it's going to be like forget this white, black, Hispanic thing, uh, Asian, and it's really blending. I think a lot, and you know, it's bi everything, bisexual, triple color. You know, uh, you know, people living. Maybe not, you know the the household mommy daddy baby and baby is over now. It's only twenty two percent. So people have different family formations. Houses are going to be more temporary, where you can either pack them up and move them, or you just you know are always in a like a, a you know a, a little rental now and then. Just go from place to place. You can work anywhere in the world. Your car is going to be filled. First of all, people will just lease cars, rent cars, that kind of thing, like an Uber kind of thing, but maybe without a driver. And but your car will be filled from satellite. You're not going to have to stop and put that thing in your car, gas or electric. This is the direction it's going, and yet, people, Fortune 200, especially are vested in, no, it's not. No, it's not. They're still saying we need supermarkets. Home delivery is not going to, and it's just not true. I mean, maybe supermarkets, because sometimes home delivery is a little more expensive. I don't think ultimately it will be. Maybe supermarkets, um, you know, for people have nothing whatsoever to do, or maybe they think it's a little cheaper, but ultimately we want absolute, convenience i, I don't i totally to... disagree with that i love okay. the supermarket i know i love you going do. shopping that's because you don't have to david <laughs> because i don't have to shop no it's because you don't have to you don't have five kids or four kids or three kids that you have to make this dinner oh, for every right. night because after you come home right. from work you have to work and you know maybe your husband's not there or your wife's not there or Mm. And yeah, and and you know, the, the, you, I I love the supermarket too. It's a very like fun thing if you don't have to. I right, okay, gotcha, agree. Okay. Um, so, talk. if for those families to 
see that thing. Look, remember when we delivered milk in the early like 1900s, right? That mm. was cool. I mean, why don't we want everything delivered? I mean, why wouldn't you? I'm sure you don't enjoy schlepping the tide home. It's heavy. But yeah. of course, you're a man. You can lift it up. Well, I... I really treasure the time when I'm not looking at a screen and I'm out in the world. Like I, I, my mail doesn't come. I don't have a mailbox for him. There's like a place I go to get my mail. That's and I fun. go in and they all say, hi, David, how are you? You're, oh, you're early today or something. And I say, oh, well, no, Keith, how are you doing today? And so there's this little sort of thing that happens. And I like that. But again, I'm not so crushed for time that that's. Yeah, you don't, you're not chained to a, a desk or a thing where you need, if you don't make that money or answer that many phone calls or do whatever you're supposed to do on the, you know, line, you're penalized. So, mm. yeah, I can understand. I, I have a post office in my country house. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Talk to the post people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> complain about the government. I love that. <laughs> everything's dirty it's so dirty and a mess is yours dirty mine's dirty uh my local um the u.s postal office that i go to the gentleman who runs it has gotten a hold of a bedazzler and um so the whole thing is like tricked out um with like hanging bedazzled stuff that he like does so what's okay. a bedazzler what's a bedazzler you know a bedazzler oh it, it it was like a thing, like it's sort of like a Martha Stewart thing. It's like a it's like a glue gun with like a, a glittery thing on the end, like a sequin on the end. And you can like, um, you know, it was really everything. big. Like seven year old girls loved these things like twenty years ago. But somehow he's gotten one of these things, and we have a very colorful post office now. So, well, that's fun. Talk to me a little bit about like you'd mentioned the money driving things. And one of the things that I'm, I find really interesting about this idea of extended lifespan is the compounding of capital that, you know, the tax system is very much skewed in the favor of people who are older and have capital. So your, your house continues to appreciate if you have a house, um, if you have, you know, investment funds, they continue to compound. And like what happens if this, you know, normally compounding stops at like 80 because you die and it, you know, there's some sort of uh, tax that happens. But if you're alive for another whatever, <laughs> 50 years, and it continues to compound, what are the what are the effects of that? No, I'm not an economist. I'm sure I'm going to make a mistake. But um you know, that has to do, are you putting money away to compound? Well, yes, or, that's assuming that that's happened. Yeah. Or you're going to need, because you're going to live longer. Are you stressed because you're going to have to use all your money just to survive? But also, if you have that money, not only are you going to compound that money, but we're, we're talking about, and I'm intrigued with this, um, you know, consciousness uploading Mm. after after like body death mm -hmm. that means maybe you can manage your money into infinity well your relatives are going to hate that but your kids are yeah hate it's the end of inheritance <laughs> yeah the end of inheritance because you know being control freak you're going to want to monitor it give it out whatever you're not going to need that much maybe because now you're a computer so you don't need a house maybe you don't eat a lot no, but maybe you want it. I don't know. I haven't, like, I can't get that many people interested in this to brainstorm with about what you want as an upload. Right. What's fun is you can see your kids grow up. You can see your grandchildren. You can see your great-grandchildren. What's not so fun is you can see how the world is destroying itself and what's going to happen to the ecology and really see it. Mm. You know, but what's great is you're going to see inventions and things that people like me are predicting really happen, flying cars and all kinds of great things. I was promised a flying car in 1965. I still don't I know. have my flying car. Where is my flying car? They can't get, I don't know. I don't think, I guess they can't get the price down. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, was, I was, I'll tell you a story. I, I was once back in my previous career as a photographer and I was sent to this town in middle of California. And the guys, the scientist's name was, I think it was Moeller or Molnar. And he was like the flying car guy. And I was like, great, show me the flying car. So he shows me the flying car hooked to a crane, which picks it up and sort of moves. <laughs> I said, oh, wait a minute here. This isn't really what I was thinking. He's like, well, you know, we're still working on it. And he's been working on it since 1965. And so there's, there's some issues there. So I'm looking forward to my flying car. Well, I think it's not an issue of can a car fly because if a plane can fly. Oh, yeah. I and mean, plane's heavier than a car mm -hmm. can fly, right? I think the issue is how much is it? And how do they clear the airspace if everybody's got a car? Mm. But that shouldn't be that hard to figure out. Maybe the demand's not that. Maybe it's too expensive. Maybe the demand. Because most what you could say, how, how come everybody doesn't have a single engine plane? Right. Right. Yeah. True. Yeah. So uh, there may be time travel before we have a, a flying car. Okay. We may be able to move our molecules through space before we have a flying car. It's much more efficient. I had a conversation with, um, I know a lot of people in the sort of science, medical longevity space. And I, last week I spoke to an economist at Oxford about sort of um, the implications of, do you know, if you add, if you add one year of working life, so people just work, general population work one more year, you add an entire point to GDP. Blew my mind. Totally blew my mind. Like, what, really? Yeah, that's what he told me. He's that's like, amazing. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah. I, I, one year past what? So say um, just, a, um, I didn't quite know how he did the math on this, but assuming yeah. that everyone, you know, stops working at 65. So whatever your normal stop work moment is, whether that's 60 or 65 or 70, and you just work one more year, that adds an entire point to GDP. And so I'm I'm wondering about, I'm not an economist, but the the sort of like, if people are working more than that, um, and and they're, but then they're consuming, right? Too, because right. as you're working, you're consuming. Right. The, the effects of this on the Fortune 200, like, how does that, I think this is going to have a really big effect. In a positive way, you mean? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So what do you project if, if like a whole bunch of points are added to the GDP? I, I think it's, um, what I, th the story I think people are getting wrong because people, you know, we have this negativity bias, right? We all want right. to see the downside and. Yeah. So the Wall, you know, the Wall Street Journal, Social Security is going to go bankrupt, all that. Well, sort of, if the trajectory stays the same. But what I'm seeing is the trajectory is not going to stay the same. And people are going to work longer. And so the tax revenues that get thrown off of a point of GDP are tremendous. Uh, and the consumptive taxes that get thrown off of that and the demands on employment from that. I mean, it all sounds like sort of a good thing. What do you remember his name, the economist? Yes, um, his name is. Oh, geez, I'm so bad with this. I talked to him for like an hour and a half last week. Um, you can send it to me. His name is. Well. I will send it to you. Arthur, or no, Ar Dr. Andrew Scott is his name. So okay. Andrew's Andrew's written a number of books about he he wrote the hundred year age in 2016, and him and I think it was Linda Grayton um, wrote another book in 2000. And now, when in my conversation with him, we were talking about you know how does this affect everything, and he says, well, that's I'm just about to finish this book on exactly that. The like hundred year the, age. Well, he's, I mean, that, yeah, his book was like the, um, the hundred year age, I think it was his first big book in 2016, but that was six years ago. Mm. So now like a hundred year age seemed like sort of a big deal, but now that's like, 
seems um, it could be much more than that. So he's sort of talking about how all these macro wheels turn and 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 what happens. But the the whole thing of like the world will go bankrupt if there's not a change in health span, because we have this huge backloaded healthcare cost. And, you know, if that gets addressed in some way, um, things change really dramatically. Meaning we'll have enough money for healthcare? Yeah. Well, if you just pay it back, we'll pay our debt. Pay the debt. And I I think that if I, I talked to another guy recently about this and, you know, there's all this discussion, Faith, about they're these, you know, billionaires or they want to live forever. Yeah. And it's like, great. I th- thank you, Jeff Bezos. You can spend as much money on this as you want because it's eventually going to sort of come down to everybody else. And there's going to be right. an economic imperative to that. Yeah. That, you know, the same way they did antibiotics were originally just for like rich people. But now I didn't know that everybody gets antibiotics, like yeah. good health care and stuff what used to be reserved for just the very affluent. But there's mm-hmm. a there's an economic imperative to this. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think that, yeah, like all these billionaires, like, OK, yeah, have at it for as much money as you can, because eventually, you know, it won't be in the first two or three years, but I mean, five years and we all sort of benefit from it. Interesting. Yeah. OK, well, we have to live long enough to see all that happen. Right, David? Yeah. Well, that's the I, <laughs> right. <laughs> People. I show people these age graphs like the, I don't know if you've seen the um, uh, Dr. Mike Roizen out of the Cleveland Clinic, his like age predictions, how we, you know, we sort of step every, every 10 years, we live another three. Okay, great. Okay. And that's been going on since like the 1830s. But now the, the, the hockey stick phase goes in. Uh, but you want to be alive to take advantage of the hockey stick. So step one, don't die. Like, don't do something stupid in your car or go like, you know? What's the hockey stick? Oh, well, you know, just as you're going from linear to non-linear oh. um, age expectation, health span. Mm-hmm. So that, I mean, he's telling me, I've had him on twice and he's he's told me both times, he said, there's an, this may not actually happen, but we feel there's an 80% likelihood that, as you said, if you're 50 now, you, you know, your life expectancy is 120. And people have, you know, I bet you come across this all the time, Faith, that People like humans have a lot of trouble dealing with step change. They're like, oh. right. Like they did. They're really good yeah. with linearity. But as soon as you get into like step change, it's like, <laughs> so what, what are do people, what, it, what, what do you think? What, what are people going to do with this extra 40 years we just gave them? I think it's um, very much what you said. I, I think that the, I, I think there's a lot of really interesting things. Um, and I think, we're seeing this manifested already in people who are younger that I see this, I see age as sort of a slinky and it's being pulled apart. I love that. Yeah. As as the slinky goes out, it affects every developmental stage through the whole thing. It's not just the end. Yeah. So you see people in their twenties living in this, a a very different way than like, at least I did when I was in my twenties or or people in their teens or in their thirties, the whole thing, is being elongated. And I think the people in their 20s are reacting now to this idea that, oh, like I might be around for a long time. Therefore, it increases my optionality. And I can go, you know, there's this thing I want to get to do. I want to have more freedom to do whatever. I don't need to be locked into something because, hey, I'm going to be around for another 100 years. Like I'll get to it later. Is that why kids aren't rushing to like progress? In like the way I did, like in a corporation, right. or make money, right. or I, I buy a house, or I'm just making this up. But it's it's like what I'm seeing. You 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 know, if you're 22, you're aware that people are living longer, and it's probably somewhere you're starting to think like, oh, I may not be dead at 70 or 80. I may be around much longer. Therefore, my optionality increases into what I can do now. I don't have to be locked into something. And then, so I I think this is happening on that end of the spectrum. And I think on the upper end, 
it's it's driven by your belief system. So if 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 system is the wrong word, but if you believe that you're going to be around, say if you're 60 and you say, all right, I'm going to be around for another 50 or 60 years, then you are going to invest in strategies and in, in things that will cause that to happen. So you behave in a very different way than if you think I'm 60, I'm going to be dead in 10 years. Right. Okay. Who, why bother going to the gym? I'm going to be 10, dead in 10 years anyway. But if you think you're going to be around for another 60, it's like, oh, geez, I got to really take care of my body here. Maybe I should invest in my career. I should invest in my knowledge base in a different way if I think that that's going to happen. Yeah. And how about investing in the environment? And investing, yes, in all of that. Right. Right. So if if you look at the people who are most interested in the environment, it's the two ends of the age spectrum. It's the people in the, in the you know the teens and the twenties, and then the people that are my age and older. Yeah, that's interesting, because I'm noticing now we're calling like these millennials lazy, but maybe no. like you say they're just taking their time. They don't have to it, do this. They have yeah. twice as long. They have twice literally exactly twice as long working years. Let's say mm-hmm. their their reality is radically different than ours. And we're looking at it from the real, from how we grew up. And like, <laughs> there's nothing that's the same. <laughs> yeah. So why are we thinking of them that they're yeah. perceiving their reality in the same way that we did? They're not. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then I'm going to maybe stop harassing my children. <laughs> They got a lot more time to, you know, it's, you know, it's it like, how many careers more... are they going to have? Dozens. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, well, this whole... so what's the hurry? <laughs> yeah. Dozens of careers and the whole gig working thing makes much more sense when you look Absolutely. at Absolutely. Yeah. Do you think we'll be more interested in art or art or music or that kind of thing? I don't know why I'm saying that because I think we're in a way less interested. I I think that's an interesting, it's one, it's what I was trying to get you to answer earlier, the Um, effect on the culture. Uh And I think art and music have a different um, usefulness now. So religion, the the way people, people have a need to gather in tribes. Um, So, you know, religions isn't doing so well these days. I mean, a lot of people are still involved, but it's not really the thing, but Bruce Springsteen, uh, that's, that's like, you know, that's church for a lot of people because it's that shared group, emotional somatic experience. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, art is a little less visceral, but I think that it's also is a tribal thing, um, a tribal identifier that, that we just, as humans, we naturally need. You know what I'm wondering is that, with chat GBT and Dolly. So we have these, you know, I don't, you know, when people say artificial intelligence, I say, stop saying artificial, you know, just making you too comfortable because it's really intelligence. Mm. Go, but, but they gather everything from everywhere. That's all they're doing. I go, that's all I'm doing. I mean, what, <laughs> you know? So, um, and then they put it together and boom. I mean, what? I don't know. So what do you think about that? I mean, you know, some of the art coming out of like Dolly is really interesting. Yeah, we use Dolly. You do? Yeah. Well, how do you use it for presentations or? Um, we use it to illustrate articles. So, I, you know, I'm, my feeling is that the creativity in Dolly, and Dolly, for those who don't know, it's spelled D-A-L-E. Not, not like Dolly the sheep or the musician. No, right, right. Um, and ChatGPT, to to me, faith the the create the hu- the human part of that, and the creativity of that is how you frame the question. Right. How do you how do you frame the input? So if you if you go to Dolly and say, uh, "Drawing woman in snow," you're gonna get you're gonna get some horrible piece of crap. But yeah. if you say Woman walking in snow at night in the style of Matisse, 1920, you're going to get something really cool. Yeah. So that, and I think it's the same with ChatGBT. It's the, 
I, I think that the creativity is how do you frame that question? Because ChatGP is extraordinary. If you say, if you give it the right um, sort of guardrails to do its thing. I know. I mean, I ask, you know, I'm sure everybody does this, say, okay, talk to me about Faith Popcorn's trend cocooning. Oh my God, better than I could have done. And it's mine. Right. I mean, so beautifully <laughs> expressed. I was so happy. So anyway, yeah. And when people go, don't use it because why? You should think of it yourself. What? That is crazy. It's just, I don't know. I, I'm very, very interested in Dolly and GBT, but what do you think is coming after that? I think these things just get better. I mean, okay. I see I see Chat GBT is like step change from Google, right? Like Google is just like so last century after you've used Chat GBT. And I and I think that there's going to be another step change, right? And maybe yeah. the you know, as I I'm just making this up. I don't know. But as I as I what I think is that you know, what you were talking about, the brain implant. Um, right. So my guess is these things function on our inputs. So if perhaps the inputs that come from us are not just a keyboard, but it's some sort of somatic input. So I have something um, attached to my finger or my ear or my eye or something that then interacts with one of these sort of engines. Oh, then so it, maybe it takes yeah. in what you see, you're saying. Maybe it takes in what you see or what you feel or. Oh, that's better even. You know, maybe it's it registers your heart rate and your, you know, your endorphin level at something or other. And, and then it responds because that's what art is, right? It's like, mm -hmm. it's us responding. And, and I think the limit right now is, with, especially with Dali, it's the, it's the input side is is the limit dolly's not limited it's it's us <laughs> so you got this keyboard yeah exactly well isn't who is socrates or said it's you know the and it also is talmudic you know from the talmud ask questions mm. you know socrates says the quality of the question you ask exactly and isn't that funny how long ago was that that he said that i mean yeah that's the to me that's what's Super, as we, I mean, I've only been working with these things for like a month, but to me, that becomes the thing. Like, how do you frame what you want from it? And then it's what it does is like limitless. Yeah. I said, I want to see a Japanese chin. This is my dog type. You know, my, um, I have Japanese chins. They're little cutie dogs. Uh, having a martini as Andy Warhol would have painted it. Very simple. Right. Yeah. Oh, it was so adorable. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you can have a lot of fun with it. It's frameable. It's everything. Why would you ever pay anybody to, well, just talk about lower end, like like what you're saying, like if we present to a client, it doesn't, have, mm -hmm. you know, we present to clients, they go, oh my God, that's amazing. It's Dolly. It's not that amazing. <laughs> You know, so I, yeah, I'm you know, excited I, about it. I love it. I hate working hard at something. Maybe I'm just lazy. I just love when somebody, I love when I ask somebody something and they answer it and it's really great. And I get my best answers. And now we have Dolly and ChatGPT just asking a question and they, somebody pops out with something like you go like, what? Wow. Yeah. That spark. I, yeah, I think this is, it's a very interesting time. I, I can also see sort of a, a bit of a backlash where cra like human craft will become valued because it is human craft. I, you know, like I can see that, you know, like it's sort of the version of the kids who really like vinyl. Um, yeah. So you're 18 years old, you're, you're into vinyl. Well, Why? Um, well, because it has this sort of like, Anna, it, it has sort of a hum, different humanity to it. A, there's an object there. A patina to a it. Patina. Yes, exactly. So there may be value of that. Um, like I love it when somebody writes me a letter and puts a stamp on it and sends it to me, it becomes yes. this super special thing. So that may escalate in value. I don't know, Faith. What do you, what do you think? I think it could become... 
I, I could see it like becoming trendy in a way, you know, yeah. like, yeah, I don't know if it's going to replace high, you know, highly tuned replication of a, or, you know, Philharmonic or something, but we love the imperfect. I think it makes us feel safer. It's like, you know, when they first came out with cookies that weren't the same size, we go like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> We love mistakes. <laughs> Wabi sabi, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wabi sabi. Exactly. Yeah. So then so th- so then let's go a little further with this faith. So okay. Wabi Sabi and Chat GBT. What's that? So how do you define wabi sabi? This is sort of like um in per- the the delight in imperfection, I guess. Perfection. Let's ask ChatGBT. Um, I don't have it up. Do you type oh, okay. it in? Okay, no. I was just saying, thinking <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, well, maybe you say to ChatGBT, show me this picture of my right. doggie. Right. But Andy Warhol was high that day. Right. What did it, it look like? It comes back to the framing of the question, right? Yeah. It's a search right. for imperfection. Right. Show me write my essay, but put in enough mistakes so my teacher won't realize it's you. (laughs) (laughs) You know how kids get caught cheating? I just just came across this at my kids' school. When they copy somebody, they have the same mistakes. Oh, right. It's pretty good. It's like an A, but a few mistakes, same mistakes. That can't be. So to all the children listening out there. But yeah. Yeah, you got to tinker with it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna cheat. But I just, I just love it. I, you know, I'm in the. I, I was always a practitioner of delegation. If somebody else can do it as well as you can do it, let them do it. Mm. People are always like repeating themselves. You know, mm-hmm. they're doing what somebody else could. I mean, it's ridiculous. And then you can either make it a little better, make it a little different, or do something else that they can't do. Well, I, you know, what's now, coming to, to mind here is um, age discrimination. So okay. it, it, I once, I read a thing about three years ago about a company in New Zealand that hired its staff entirely via um, text. So there was no Zoom. There was no visual of the person there was no audio, so you didn't know what the person's accent was or how, or name you know, or 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 what or gender nationality or gender. Yeah, none of that. Right? It was so it became this pure meritocracy. Like, okay, what happened? you could either do this thing or you can't do this thing. And what I, one of the things I'm thinking about with um, think, avatars and metaverse and things like that is that you know if you're you know, there's no age discrimination because you can just pick whatever time you want, right? Like, and you can be anywhere you want. So it opens up, I think, a lot of possibilities. Yeah. Not just for age, but people who have physical handicaps or their whatever. Like it 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 changes all that. You can look any way you want. Exactly. That's fantastic. If, like you said, if you're handicapped, you can be running around or. Right. Oh, actually, in the metaverse, nobody has any legs, so you feel like, comfortable. But, you know, when you see people at a table, you know, they, I don't know what is with the metaverse, but they don't have legs. So, um, yeah, but program. I love that. Huh? <laughs> it's too hard to program. Probably. <laughs> Why program the other 50% of the human? Yeah. <laughs> this is twice as much work. But no, I like that. Then you're just whoever you want to be. Yeah, and it comes down to what's your um, what's your capacity, what's your talent. what's your input, what's your talent, not what do you look like, how age you know, like what you were saying, everything is sort of funneling to one color, right? In the, in the metaverse, it doesn't matter what you know, whatever it doesn't matter. You I just know. make it up. Yeah, you know what else? Uh, Abba, the singing group, sure. They just did that. I mean, they did their album as avatars. So they had they spent a lot of money doing this. They had somebody create them much younger 
Right. And they are touring as avatars. So the tour is a digital projection? Yeah. It's not a projection, though. It's a recreation because they look much better. (laughs) Because they're older now, you know? You can... That's so interesting. So you can... It's one of the things that I... um, You know, people ask me about, uh, you know, cosmetic procedures and dermatology and things like that. And I said, well, it makes a certain amount of sense if you want to you want to match how you feel to how you present yourself to the world. Yeah. And I that makes sense to me. And I and and so this is like further. (laughs) Yeah, it's further. Yeah. 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 And I think it's been very successful, actually. Mm. And another group, what is it? Those five, six, seven, why don't I know it? Korean boys, that oh, singing group, uh, ABD, yeah. A, um, it's initials too. I'm, yeah, I know exactly who you okay. mean. Okay. Yeah. They, I don't know if you know this, have like 15 of them, different groups. And a manager, like a Rasputin, who puts them everywhere. And they are because the thing about a group or a singer, you only have one right time, one thing at a time. Right. No, they're they're marketing them everywhere in the world. Brilliant. Another form, but they could actually as well, if especially if it was in the metaverse, use an avatar. You could actually use an avatar. The other thing is there. There's this box. I forget what it is. You walk into this little box. This box, right? And it transports you like to a stage, let's say 6,000 miles away. I mean, not you, it, the image, but it's real. I mean, it feels real. It looks real. It is you. Mm. You can't walk into the box on the other side because, you know, it's actually a projection, but it's perfect. Mm. And Deepak Chopra just came up recently with an avatar that you can talk to. Very him looks very much like him it looks it is him then you say is an avatar you which is the real you who is it i i I think it's um i think this stuff freaks out a lot of people but i to me it's you know like you were saying in you know in 1970 if you thought that zoom or an iPhone or any of this existed, they would think you were a mental case. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and things are progressing much faster now than they have. Since I know. Then. This one thing Ray Kurzweil said very in very big letters. Don't assume because something took a long time to get here. There's going to be take in the future. It's exposition. Right. Right? It's going to go like this. It can go very fast. Yeah. So, that's why the Fortune 200 won't be here in 50 years. It'll be different because yeah. they cannot get this. They do not want to. They need to make money now because of the stock market. They need to make money now. And they need not to invest anything about making money in this new world, let's call it. I, I truthfully think it's a failure of imagination. They just can't. It's very, it's what I was saying earlier. People are really good with linear, linearity. Yeah. But step change, it's very, very difficult to imagine. And yeah. So they're looking at a sort of a linear development and step change and then jump change. Jump change, yeah. So, yeah, I'm worried about the Fortune 200 because I kind of have become attached to them all these years. <laughs> wow. And I, their resistance is just amazing. <laughs> Just, and I understand, I mean, but they still should put a little bit, they make a lot of money. They could put a little bit aside and say, well, you know, challenge them. Suppose this happens and that happens. Like, uh, here's a question for you. Mm. You're interested. What is a brand in the future? I don't have the magic answer. Isn't that a cool question? I'll ask ChatGBT that. What is a brand in the future? That's, uh... I all right. So what a what is a brand now? It's a set of values. Set um, of values. No, and it's also colors, isn't mm-hmm. it? It's a name. Colors too. Yeah. Colors. It's like 
sometimes a lot more colorful in the name and everything than it is values. What are the values? Refreshing? Is that a value? Well, I think the values, if you have a, uh, if you have a very strong founder, so you have like a Steve Jobs and an Apple, yeah, yeah. then you, like that would be clear to me. Um, but most aren't. Most aren't. No, it's just sort of like the yeah. cleaner than clean, whiter than white. <laughs> what values? That's not a value. And the companies, I have to say, not to be too mean, you know, behind them do have some values, but mm -hmm. it's not really reflected in the brand. It's really mm -hmm. made for the people in the mm -hmm. company, I think. So what is a brand in the future? And I like this one. Will there be brands in the future? Suppose there's just milk, <laughs> the best milk. You know, I mean, people like style. So maybe it won't only be car. They want different kinds of cars to choose from. Uh, I think there's, but uh, you look at the, like the economic imperative of the brand. So if if it's just milk, it's a pure commodity. So there's no economic, then the economics of that is you're competing against every other commodity that's just milk. So mm -hmm. you want to differentiate your milk from the other milk. So now it's your brand of milk. Right. And and that's the only way you can compete. Otherwise, it's just everybody, it's a race to the bottom to make the cheapest, like suppose milk milk. like if we had slavery, right? It'd be suppose my milk would free the slaves. Yeah. Milk that I, frees its slaves. I would buy your milk. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's what a brand is going to be in the future. Something that is one hundred, you know, really on some kind of like you say, imperative or standard or mm -hmm. belief or ethos or whatever you want to say. Absolutely. I mean, look at it. It's, but it's kind of going that way, right? Faith. Like if you look, if you talk to young people in their twenties, they are super attuned to this sort of thing. You know, where did it come from? What sort of damage is it doing? Where, where is it going after I'm done with it? These are of, of paramount importance to them. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 is it enough? Are they enough? I, I think they're mainly also a little bit also lazy. That <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, I was like around in the 60s, we were picketing and boycotting every damn thing that we could find. We were not lazy. And people now go, eh, somebody, if I hear young people, the technology will take care of it. Well, suppose it doesn't. Yeah. You know, or we can make an elephant of all the elephants disappear out of some DNA and we can probably reproduce an elephant. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So Jurassic Park time, you know. So how long are you going to live, Faith? Let's predict the future. Well, this kind of gave me a little bit of... I know you're going to think this is weird because I study it, but I don't apply. You know, doctor, heal thyself. Uh -huh. You know that? I uh -huh. do not use this stuff on myself. I do not buy stocks. Like every single company I've ever worked for, this stock went up. My friends buy all their stocks. <laughs> I do not. Not out of any ethical thing. I just, I don't know what it is. But now that we're talking about it, I decided that maybe I'm going to, because I was always thinking like, I don't know, like is 85, I, I look at the old bit. So is 85 enough? Is 90 enough? How? What's enough? But maybe it's not enough. Maybe if I live to a hundred, maybe my kids would actually bring home some grandchildren. I mean, you know, um, so maybe I'll live a little longer. But if I gave you a pill, which I don't think this is outrageous, I, I actually think in five to 10 years, there will be a, a pill to, you know, sort of reset your epigenetic information and, and, you know, you're whatever age you want, you're 40 or 50 and biologically, but, you know, chronologically, you can be like a hundred or 150. So if I said to you, okay, here at a hundred, you're going to be functioning like faith at 40. Would you do that? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Who wouldn't do that? Who wouldn't do that? Yeah. Maybe religious people won't like it. 
You know, yeah. suppose they say, God doesn't like that. You're going to get a group that says that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there'll be there'll be death cults. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I would definitely. What was the offer? I buy this pill and I live till. Well, I just say like every time you take this pill, it sort of resets you to age 40. And how often do I have to take it? Well, maybe you get to 50, you don't like 50, you take the pill, you go back to 40. People would spend everything for that. <laughs> right. If you, I mean, you want to, so here's something I'm finding very interesting, but, you know, okay. Ozempic, mm. Mond- Monduro is the other one. I think there are three, four. These little injections they uh, reduce the blood sugar, I believe. And then mm-hmm. you lose weight. Cre- I think everybody at the academies is on them. Everybody, everybody. A mm-hmm. um, couple of downsides to that too. Oh uh, yeah. Pan- you mean like thyroid cancer, cancer and- only in animals. Uh, yeah. Well, and also um, you probably can't be on this for another 20 years because it's going to have all kinds of other effects in your body and then when you go off it you're going to go in a massive rebound so, um yeah <laughs> it can't get enough of it to your point david yeah well you uh, yeah it can't get enough of it even That's... though you don't quite know the answer i'm doing a lot of interviews about this mm. to like oh well i'll just won't eat as much, you know, it's, it, it, it won't rebound if you, if you don't eat what it's, you're eating. It, it, it's going to change. Um, that's not what I've read. Um, what have you read? Is if you, if you come off of this, your body goes into rebound on it. So you're probably going to become ravenous about everything. So if you could control that, it's unlikely you can, but if you could, yeah. you would probably stay because I, I don't believe it changes your metabolism. I think it's just um, changing your blood sugar. But there all there are other studies about law. Lo- it's not just weight that goes down, but your body composition changes. So you're also losing muscle and some other stuff. Um, but you're right. Probably everybody at the Academy Awards last night had a shot earlier this week, and they have good doctors. They're, I mean, well, <laughs> you know, I, it, I'm wondering, I mean, can you stay on it for, they don't know it's new. I, uh, maybe, I mean. Or maybe like I'm sounding like kids, like say there'll be some technology that is going to come uh, up and tell, keep us on it or what? It's, um, yeah, I think there's a lot that hasn't been quite figured out about that one. And uh, you can't buy it. So yeah, it's that thing we've always been wanting. So you talk about the age pill. This is mm. the weight pill. Yeah. All yeah. those things that we've been dreaming about. We'll live mm-hmm. forever. We'll be thin forever. And now we're going to be smarter forever. This could be the beginning of all of those. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. So that's the answer to how do I want to live to 120 like I want to be 40 and I want exactly. to be thin and yeah, I don't want to go to the gym. Right. Yeah. Could be okay. Could be okay. If it works. Yeah. It's uh, I don't, you know, we'll see. Um, I think uh, I, I do think in a not so, di- and this sounds like when I tell people this, they think I'm crazy, but I, I do think that in a not so, like within 10 years, there will be a pill with, that will be able to reset your, essentially your epigenetic age. I I think that's going to happen. And how much is that pill going to cost? I think initially it's probably going to be like Bezos money, but I think the economic imperative from the healthcare system, from the governments it's going to drive it way down. Um, and who do you think is going to make the pill? Some pharma company that you definitely want to buy stock in. Exactly. <laughs> Just asking. 
as soon as as soon as I start seeing the tests on that faith, I'll give you a ring. That's where you yeah, want to put please, all your money. <laughs> please, I'm going to put all my money there. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this is um, so interesting. Yes, I love talking with you. We we should do like a thing on stage. Um, okay, I'm I think we really that. wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> yes, let's get some money for it though. Let's sell it to somebody. Yeah, we'll get some pharma company. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we should get the Osmembic people, whoever make that stuff like. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. This was really great. Okay, super. The, Fantastic. I'm, I'm really glad we connected. We were able to do this today. Me too. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really loved it, David. Me too. Take care, Faith. See you soon, babe. Wow. How about a snapshot into the future with Faith Popcorn? Um you know, a lot of what we talked about there seems really fantastical, um, but I don't know. I'd um, if I had to bet, I'd put my money on face predictions. Um, she's pretty right on about this stuff. Okay, so this is the time in the show when we do just try this, and we're going to get to that in just a quick second. Today's show is also brought to you by Inside Tracker. Inside Tracker is the dashboard to your inner health. You know, we talk about this a lot, about metrics, what matters, biomarkers. The thing is, you can't take actions on things that you don't know about, and what you don't know about can hurt you. I use Inside Tracker. I take their ultimate test four times a year. I look at their biomarkers. I see what's moving from quarter to quarter, so I can see if I've made changes in my program and my diet is there something that I need to adjust? And their food first, supplement second recommendations are great. I always share the results with my doctor. And if there's something we need to go over, we do that. Go to insidetracker.com slash ageist. Save 20% on all their products. This week on Just Try This, I'm going to recommend grabbing onto a pole above your head and hanging. That sounds weird, doesn't it? Um, there is a lot of data on the intersection of grip strength and mortality. So who knows if it's causal, like does lack of grip strength lead to death? I don't know. Um, but what I do know is when I, when I go to the gym, I'll just grab on to like a, you know, a pull-up bar somewhere and I'll just hang there for like, you know, as long as I can. And what that does is it, it elongates my spine. It loosens up my shoulder joints and I all around feel better. And who knows, maybe increasing my drip, grip strength by doing this, I may live longer. I don't know. But this is an easy, zero-cost thing that everybody can do. I try to do it, you know, maybe like three times a week, and I feel better. So just try this. Um, grab a pole and hang from it. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on the show today. I, I just want to say, like, it is great that you give us your attention like this every week. Um, we really appreciate it. If you have any questions um, for Faith, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you do, you can hit me up, david at superage.com. I'll get back to you quickly, personally, and promptly. And guess what? This is the time in the show when you can leave us up to a, hey, a five-star review wherever you're listening to this. We love that. And we love comments too. So thank you so much if you can do that. Um, We've got another really, we, we're on like a roll here with Super H Podcast. I got to say, we've got some really amazing ones. Um, and we've got another great one next week. So until then, everyone have a wonderful week and we'll see you then.